Why don't you just give it a little go? No, I'm not interested in any of your silly games. But it's not silly. It's about sea life. But you watch all those David Attenborough documentaries. Because and... they're educational and well-produced video games are for children. <sighs> Here are seven misconceptions about video games that can get in the bin. Starting with... Video games are for children. I remember hearing this for the first time back in the year 2000. I was 13, awkwardly straddling the divide between boy and man. I'd just bought the very first issue of PSM2 magazine with my week's worth of Dr Pepper money. That's how badly I wanted it. PSM2 issue 1 came with a cover-mounted VHS. Now I'm not making that up, you had to rewind it and everything. On which was the first E3 trailer for Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. To this day, I still think it's the best gameplay trailer ever made. Ten searing minutes of Hollywood quality action, a thumping musical score, and at the very end, a release window. 2001. I remember my dad walking in as this date flashed on screen. You'll be nearly 15 when that comes out, he said. You'll have grown out of video games by then. If the acronym LOL had been invented then, I'd have literally said that to him. Instead, I just laughed out loud, safe in the knowledge that no matter what hormonal gymnastics my teenage mind performed over the coming year and a half, there was no way on earth I'd be anything other than a quivering lump of excitement when Metal Gear Solid 2's release date rolled around. And Metal Gear Solid 3's. And Metal Gear Solid 4's. And Metal Gear Solid 5's. I turned 29 a few months after that came out, still as excited as a five-year-old at Christmas. People often say video games awaken their inner child, but that's not true, is it? It's not your inner child. It's just you. If you're anywhere near my age, in your early 30s, then video games have grown up alongside you, from colourful pixel platformers to deep, affecting works of adult fiction. They're for everyone, whether you're 3 years old, 33 years old or 93 years old. Pick up a pad and get playing. So yeah, the next time someone tells you games are just for kids, tell them all of that. Or just show them Hotline Miami or something. Entry number two is something that really annoys me, and that's when you get told, oh, don't go playing video games, they'll ruin your imagination. Go and read a book instead, these people say. Something that does require imagination. Now, don't get me started on this. Too late, I've started. Firstly, books. They're fantastic and important, and we should all read lots. But this sneering, condescending assumption that books have the monopoly on engaging the imagination is hot nonsense. Like, the words are written in front of your face. There was a large grey elephant, a book might say. What does your brain do? It pictures a large grey elephant. Oh, how imaginative! He's unconsciously projecting a mental image of the words you've just read, actually using your imagination. Or is your brain just passively picturing the text in front of your face? Words from which you cannot deviate, over which you have no influence or control. Video games, on the other hand, can send your imagination into overdrive and in so many different ways. The Witness is a puzzle game that forces you to think up intuitive solutions. You even have to think up solutions for reaching those solutions, like, damn, I'd better take a photo of this so I remember it later. Puzzle games engage your brain in a way no other the median can come close to. Then you've got role-playing games that encourage you to, yes, role-play as another person, choose dialogue based on what that person might do, shape the story as you see fit. Often RPGs will leave your protagonist's backstory completely blank. How does that fill itself in? With your imagination. Games like Little Big Planet are essentially imagination crystallised. Snapshots of creativity saved for everyone to enjoy. Dark Souls, with its minimalist environmental storytelling, forces you to piece together its lore using, yes, your imagination. In my humble opinion, video games engage the human imagination to a far higher degree than books or movies by their very nature. You're an active player not a passive consumer. Seriously though, books are amazing. Read all the books you can. This video was sponsored by Books. Entry number three. They're antisocial. What? Video games are antisocial. Sorry? 
I can't hear you over the noise of the five friends I'm talking to all at the same time as we play an online multiplayer shooter together and hang out in virtual space and stuff. Also, my sister met her now fiancé on the streets of Burnout Paradise. So antisocial. Entry number four. They're all the same. This is something you'll hear only from people who've literally never played a single video game in their entire lives. Because obviously, it's total claptrap. They're all just about guns and football, these people say as they glide past the recent release aisle in Morrison's. And the ridiculous thing is, video games are so broad now that the term video games has been stretched to breaking point by the strain of having to lay a semantic blanket over this ever-increasing variety. Often nowadays you'll see thoughtful musings on whether or not certain genres should even be called video games. Maybe there's something different altogether. Interactive stories, walking simulators, games like What Remains of Edith Finch, Firewatch, Abzu, Ether One. None of them test you in ways you'd traditionally expect a video game to test you. There are no boss battles or difficulty levels or escort missions or bits where you have to defend an NPC from waves of enemies while they really slowly open a thing. In no other medium do you get this variety. You know, movies differ wildly in terms of style and genre, but the physical act of watching a movie is always the same. You sit down, you shut up if you're a decent human being, and you watch the movie. Whereas there are loads of different ways to physically play a video game. You can sit on your sofa with a gamepad, you can immerse yourself in VR, you can play games with your entire body, you can touch them with your fingers, take them with you on the bus, play them with people who live on the other side of the world. Or, if you like, you can shoot some aliens and score some goals. Lovely. Number five, video games are art, or video games are not art, or just that it matters either way. You often get people defending the cultural relevance of video games by proclaiming that video games are art. They'll cite titles like The Last of Us, Journey, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, or Okami in an attempt to validate their claim, but sometimes I think there's a confusing lack of distinction between labelling something as art and simply labelling something as good. Those games I listed are all critically acclaimed. They're original, beautiful, and elicit intense emotional reactions from the people who play them. But just because something has surpassed an arbitrary barrier of subjective quality, or has nicely rendered trees in it, doesn't implicitly qualify it as art. In much the same way that just because something is rubbish doesn't mean that it isn't art. I mean, you know, look at this. Art? Yes. Rubbish? Also, yes. I mean, lots of people throw Okami about as proof video games are art simply because it has paintbrushes in it. This jar has paintbrushes in it. Would you call this jar art? Maybe it is, but the point I'm clumsily trying to make is that video games don't have to be art to be taken seriously as a creative medium, and similarly, games don't have to be BAFTA-winning commentaries on the nature of the human condition to be art. If The Last of Us is art, then so is PES 2018. What? It's a team's creative interpretation of something, in this case, football. Either way, if the pointless debate over whether or not video games can be considered art ever reaches a conclusion, the result in no way affects the validity of video games as an influential and culturally significant medium. God, is this a Friday feature or a bloody essay on SeriousGamer.net? Mum, say something funny. That's it. That's the level. Now we're back. Entry number six. Now, I've tried many times to get my wife and my mum to play games, and a common response is, they're too difficult, or they take too long, which, if you've never played a video game before and someone hands you The Witcher 3, is probably true. But as we discussed in entry number four, video games are so varied nowadays that anyone can be a gamer. Everybody's gone to the rapture, three or four hours and you're done. Firewatch, same kind of time frame, and 
zero challenge in terms of actually, you know, using your thumbs. As video games cater for broader audiences, developers are making games for adults who don't have much time on their hands. I've mentioned before I have a toddler now, so unless your game is sub three hours or has Final Fantasy in the title, I'm probably not going to finish it anytime soon. And the brilliant thing is, there are loads of incredible, easy games you can pick up and have your mind blown by in the same amount of time it would take you to argue about what to watch on Netflix. Abzu is a three hour journey through a gorgeous underwater dreamscape and you get to be a blue whale. What Remains of Edith Finch is an amazing story and a real work of art that you can be done with in two hours. Inside is an incredible side-scrolling puzzle mystery thing that'll tie your grey matter in knots within three hours. These games aren't hard and they don't take forever. Give them a go. Our final entry, video games don't teach you anything. Huh? Tell that to my devastated uncles who got owned on Trivial Pursuit this Christmas thanks to my general knowledge that is definitely at least 50% video games. Like, if you ever find yourself at home when The Chase or Tipping Point is on TV and a question about Norse mythology comes up, you'll just be screaming the answer. See! See! It's Sleepner! Odin's eight-legged horse is called Sleepner. Have you never played Final Fantasy? Yeah, if you play video games, you'll know as much about Norse mythology as is humanly possible without doing a degree on it. You'll also probably know loads of history from playing Assassin's Creed. I mean, I certainly know more from playing that series than I do from Mr. King's lectures on the Aztecs in Year 8. If you've played Bioshock, you've probably looked up Randism on Wikipedia. You'll know what a dystopian is. Did you know loads of non-gamers have never heard the word dystopia? I know, it's weird. Crucially, you'll be highly knowledgeable and far more likely to survive than non-gamers in the event of a zombie apocalypse, which, as we all know, is a really important skill set to possess. And there we go, seven misconceptions about video games that can get in the bin. If you've had experience with any of these, or if you can think of any we've missed, then please let us know in the comments, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and please join us again next week for another Friday feature. Thanks for watching.